Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to my recovery series. If you are new here, um, this series is about my lapros robotic laparoscopic hysterectomy and cystoscopy. If you have not seen part one and part two, be sure to watch that first. And then this video today is going to cover week two. I have my phone here where I have been keeping notes throughout the week. Um, but I feel like I can't move on with this video without telling you guys that um, I'm coming from a very weird place today filming this video and to be honest with you I don't want to film it. I want to kind of like cut this series all together but I feel like I would be doing a disservice to you because I told you it would be coming. Um, last week during my recovery I got the most devastating, heartbreaking, life-changing news and to be perfectly honest with you I'll talk a little bit about just how it affected recovery but when I had the surgery a hundred percent of my focus was on recovery I told myself I was going to be all in I was going to put all my focus and energy there I was going to kind of like get rid of any responsibilities any expectations I was going to kind of relax and let things fall as they would um, and then this happened in our lives and it just like it became so unimportant and the only reason I'm sharing that the only reason I am even letting you guys know that that's going on is because my focus is not on recovery anymore to be honest with you like I am not even paying attention <laughs> I don't want to say I'm, I'm not paying I'm paying attention to my body because I know there's only so much I can do um, because I don't want to end up back in the hospital and make things worse but I am not on top of it. I am not doing the things that I should be doing. I'm doing things that I shouldn't be doing. But we're going to talk about it. And I wanted to continue filming the series because I kind of figure if I'm going through it while recovering, there are going to be other people in the world that are going through it while recovering. Like we're not all going to have just this picturesque, perfect recovery where we get to be home and lay on the couch and watch TV all the time and have, you know, a husband that caters to our every needs and people driving our kids back and forth from things. That's just not realistic for most people. So I wanted to talk about my recovery from the standpoint of somebody who is going through something very traumatic and also while my body is trying to get recover from something very traumatic. So we're just gonna jump right in. Um, yeah, let's do that. So the biggest thing that happened on week two is that I stopped taking pain meds. Originally, I started for like the first, I believe two, maybe three days, I took a Percocet only at nighttime just to help me sleep because I figured that my body needed the most recovery at night. So, you know, that's kind of when your body rebuilds itself, when it repairs. And so I wanted to make sure I was in a deep, painless sleep. But the only medicine I was taking during the day was two Tylenol extra strength in the morning before I took the kids to school. And then I think one or two days during the week, I took it in the middle of the day. And that was a whole thing in itself because um, I would wake up and take the medicine, take the Tylenol and it would make me sick to my stomach. So I was dealing with just being, you know, trying to get into this feeling of my new body and how it's feeling healing while also feeling very nauseous, very sick, and just like not wanting to go anywhere. The reasoning for getting off medication is because I needed to drive. I needed to be in a position where I could drive my kids where they needed to go. And um, that meant no medication. You cannot drive when well, you're not supposed to drive on painkillers and I chose not to do that. And also I needed to make sure that with driving, that's been a whole, I didn't even put this on my list, but driving is a whole other experience because your doctor or the paper they give you will tell you um, you can return to driving when you are off medication or when you can kind of like twist and turn without pain. And so with me, I'm being extra cautious extra cautious driving because when I'm trying to look at oncoming traffic, I don't want to completely turn my entire, like keep my core this way and my upper body this way. So I am very 
um, intentional about moving my whole body at one time and making sure that my car is in a position where I can see oncoming traffic from all different ways without putting strain on my body. So that is something to think about. You might you know, think, oh, I'm off pain meds, I can drive, that's great. But you also have to remember that all this twisting and turning and putting just that, that, um, that pressure and that intensity on your core, it's not going to recover as quickly. So, but I stopped taking medication for that purpose. And to be honest with you, what I told my husband was that I felt like I could be without medicine. Probably by day three or day four. Um, and anytime I say pain, I'm actually referring to discomfort because I haven't had actual like pain this whole time, but I have had discomfort. And so by like day four, I would tell my husband, I feel like I could, like I don't need medication. Um, but then when I took the medication, it was like a world of a difference. Like I went from feeling things, feeling gas pains, feeling kind of like discomfort to feeling nothing at all. So while I don't think that the pain, the meds were like something that I needed, they were definitely convenient. So with that being said, once I got off of the pain meds, at this point I started feeling things like from the actual surgery. On week one, I was feeling a lot of gas pains. I was feeling pains in my shoulder, pains in my chest, like having trouble breathing, my ribs feeling like um, they were just pushing up on my lungs. I just felt a lot of discomfort in terms of gas. But in week two, I started to feel little pinches, little pulls, things like when you sneeze, it, it, it's the, I don't even know how to explain it to be honest with you. When I sneeze, it almost feels like something like is trying to detach. Like there's like a little thread that's holding it together and I'm straining it and trying to pull it apart. So I try not to cough, I try not to sneeze, but it happens. <laughs> So it's nothing crazy, you know, I, I've told my husband it's kind of like experiencing when you go on a run or you go for a brisk walk, a brisk walk, a quick walk, um, and you feel like the little cramping in your side, like the little pinching in your side, that's kind of what these pains feel like. By about day three on week two, I was just feeling burnt out. and. To be honest with you, I was doing a lot of things that I shouldn't have been doing. I jumped right back into life, essentially. I did take a step back from things, you know, like doing dishes and, you know, not doing all the dishes at one time and doing laundry very carefully, but I was still, you know, getting up in the morning, making my kids lunches, taking them to school, coming home and doing things around the house, like things that just accumulated in that first week, going to pick the kids back up, taking them to soccer, walking the soccer field, taking them to karate. I was bending, I was squatting, I was doing a lot of things that I probably shouldn't have been doing that soon. And it didn't feel like it was strain on like my physical body, just in terms of like the surgical site and where everything is healing. But I was burnt out. I felt burnt out. I felt quite a few times like I just felt like I needed to cry. I felt like I felt a little bit resentful towards my husband. Um, I was tired, like I would just sit in the shower and let the water like run down my head. I felt emotional, I felt out of connection with my body and this I've heard is just very common. I've heard these emotions are normal regardless of if you keep your ovaries or not because as you may or may not know your ovaries um, control a lot, everything, I mean everything in your body, your ovaries are a huge deal. So I kept mine, but even with that, you still go through these emotions. And I just remember I was in the shower and I felt like I wasn't in my own body. I had what they call swelly belly. That's kind of the fun term for your, your stomach swelling. And the reason your stomach is doing that is because you know inside you are recovering from a surgery. And it's just like anything else, when you're recovering, it swells. So your stomach becomes bloated and I looked at one point like I was about five months pregnant and I just felt it sounds so silly because it's not like I was insecure or like thinking oh my gosh I'm so fat but it just didn't feel like it was my body I felt out of my body and so a big thing that you will hear when you get the surgery if you you know kind of do your research or read blogs or watch YouTube videos or whatever is that recovery is like a roller coaster and I have never heard anything more true. Um, you know, it kind of worked like one day I would take two extra strength Tylenols two times a day and then the next day I wouldn't take anything at all. 
um, one day, you know, and, and a lot of that is because you really feel good one day and so you start to do more than you should and then by the following day you're having discomfort, you're having fatigue, and so it has been a, a lot of up and down um, at this point and that's where I think a lot of the emotion comes from. It's like just feeling that disconnect from your mind and your body and knowing what you want to do but knowing you can't do it. It's a lot of just not feeling like yourself. Another big thing that happened on week two is I started being able to lay on my side and let's see, I put lay on my flat, oh, okay. I started to be able to lay, first of all, flat on my back. In the first video, I talked about how I couldn't do that because the gas pains were kind of so severe that if you laid flat, if I laid flat on my back, it just felt like the gas would just rise up and it hurt everything. And so I was, I was laying in a seated position on the couch for... I mean halfway into the second week so during the second week I started being able to lay flat on my back and I even got to the point where I was able to lay on my side now I have just started week three yesterday and I will tell you that still up to this point laying on my side is kind of a, a sensitive touchy thing like sometimes it feels I don't want to say perfectly fine because I always feel something but sometimes I can do it with more ease and then other times it just like things feel like they're pulling and actually last night on the side I felt I should say this for the next video but I felt almost like a bone was trying to like poke out of my side as weird as that sounds and I also experienced the organ shift which really is like when you have a surgery like that things are kind of moved around during surgery and when you do things like move to your side your organs kind of like slightly shift because they're all like still healing and, and it's just a whole thing so it's the most bizarre, gross feeling, and for a while I actually didn't lay on my side because of that, because I would just turn my side and feel things like shift, and it, it made me feel physically ill. And when that stuff happened, if I really needed to lay on my side because my back hurt, I would just put like something underneath my stomach, like a pillow or a stuffed animal. That way I still got the satisfaction of kind of like being to the side, but my stomach wasn't just falling to the side, if that makes any sense, which is a whole other thing. Something about like having surgery, it's, it's just like if you have a baby. My stomach felt like jiggly. If I laughed, it felt like my stomach would just bounce up and down. When normally my stomach is very tight, it's very, I mean, it doesn't move, it's static. I had to cut the video because my husband came home in the middle of shooting, but I believe I was talking about my stomach just basically because you're, it's, your stomach is going through trauma and it's recovering. So your muscle, your core is not engaged. So when I laugh or, or just do anything really, my stomach feels jiggly even though there's not a whole lot there. But it's just, again, it's just a random funny feeling to kind of look out for whatever. I, I find it to be funny. It's interesting. So as I mentioned earlier in the video, in week two, I started to do a lot of things that I shouldn't be doing, and I'm not gonna like go too far into that again, but I just was doing a lot of bending down to pick things up. I was doing kind of like squatting, so I would try to squat instead of bend to take less pressure off my core. I was walking a lot, like my kids' soccer games, they have a really big field because there's tons of teams playing at one time, and just going to their games and walking across the field, and. Um, you know, I am sitting in a chair to watch, but even just walking to the field is a lot. So I had to take a step back, you know, a few times when I felt a little bit worn out. And I'll kind of transition that into the fact that the nights are the most difficult because obviously by the end of the day, I'm burnt out. I'm just like, I'm so tired. I just need like, there's nothing I want more than to lay in bed and do nothing but watch TV. I just don't want to do anything and that's hard because I have kids and I have a husband and it just got to where like I was being very short with the kids at night like I needed them to be on a routine and I needed them to step up and they really did they've stepped up in a really big way they've been super helpful and they've been very responsible um, but I just needed them to kind of like do things on their own because I would get home at a certain point in the day from our events I would take a shower and I would kind of announce to everybody I'm going to bed and it was just kind of assumed at that point that my husband would step in and kind of get things moving for the rest of the night. Um, and so just, yeah, nights are just hard because I'm tired and when you're tired, 
you know, I don't want to say I, I haven't had a lot of resentment, but there's been a little bit of resentment there that one night um, and just being moody and just in general feeling like, why am I doing so much when I should just be laying here in bed recovering? I didn't mention earlier with the little aches and pains, the discomforts that I had, that at one point I was kind of having a very like slight uh, menstrual cramping feeling. And I don't know what that is. Like I know, I do know it is common, but I don't know what causes it. I don't know if it's muscles or what, because I mean, generally when you feel cramping as a woman, it's because you have a uterus and your uterus is kind of like, you know, doing this, constricting and expanding and whatnot. Um, but I guess I was just feeling like cramping in my lower stomach. Uh, maybe it was just from being tired. Maybe it was from pain. I'm not sure. But it was so mild, like almost not even worth mentioning. But I think that other people have it more. So I wanted to put it out there that I did experience it. But I only remember having it one night and it was a very, very slight menstrual cramping feeling. And then lastly, I just, well, not lastly, but the last kind of like point about this is that I've struggled with food. That's been kind of a, the hardest thing about recovery has been food. It has been, you know, the being hungry, feeling anxiety about what I'm gonna eat. And that's just because I'm so used to doing the food in our household. Um, and I can't go walk a grocery store. So my kids are eating a lot of food out of the house. <laughs> you know, after events, we're just kind of like going and getting things that are quick. I'm picking lunch up from, you know, like a subway and taking it to them at school for their lunch because I just haven't, I, three weeks I haven't been to the grocery store. So I've been eating out a lot. Like I said in the last video, I've been eating at our wellness cafe a lot, just doing a lot of smoothies, doing a lot of, uh, before surgery, I stocked up on some like stir fry type veggie bags. So I just throw that in with some oil and eat it like that. But that's been kind of the most like present problem, I would say. And you know, with my husband, I do still cook for him, but I would sit down in a chair and kind of like chop up veggies on the cutting board and he would help out a little bit so that I wasn't overextending myself at the end of the day. Now I don't want to like, I don't want to jump back into kind of a negative feeling. So I'm going to try to move through this quickly. But overall, the last thing I wrote at the end of week two is that I'm kind of just now at this point going through the motions. I'm feeling things more because I, like I said, I don't have the energy. I don't have all this energy and focus to put on my recovery. So I have stopped taking any and all pills altogether. Um, you know, I did start taking a prenatal just because I, I need that. But in general, I just stopped getting out of bed. Um, and then once I was able to get out of bed, it was just, you know, I, I had three days of crying. I didn't eat at all. I lost a lot of weight. That obviously put pain on my stomach. And then when I got up, which is, you know, kind of where we are today, I've just kind of gone numb. Like I've... I think as a way to just like survive and get through each day, I've kind of blocked everything out and I'm just in survival mode. Like get from A to B, get the kids to school, get home and do this, pick up the kids. And so I don't, I don't have the energy to keep track of when pills need to be taken. You know, this pill needs to be taken twice, two pills twice a day, like take this. And I, I just, I don't have it in me right now. So I say that to say like, I'm just, healing naturally like my body is doing whatever it's going to do naturally i am feeling things i will discuss that in week three because that's basically not taking pills like has led into week three um but at this point it's just kind of a matter of survival and doing what i need to do to get through the day but i hope that i this stuff's only going to get worse i'm just going to put it out there like that it's going to get worse before it gets better um, we just have a lot coming up that's going to be really challenging and that I'm going to be forced to lay it all out on the table and feel emotions and I don't want to sound dramatic, but this is something that has changed our lives. So it is, it's, it's dramatic in the sense like it is a huge thing that has happened to us and it's kind of one of those things that you have to work the system and you have to work through pain and, um, you know, before you can move on. So I'm hoping that 
this week isn't going to be too exhausting and I continue to take notes. But either way, even if it's, you know, even if I miss some weeks and I come back at week six and I update you guys, I do have my follow-up appointment this Friday. Um, so either way, you'll get some kind of update. I just don't know if it's going to be on week to week. I don't even know if there's going to be anything to update you guys on week to week. So I will let you guys know. But thank you again for following this journey and I hope that you are getting something out of it. I know it can be very rambly, but I'm exhausted. I feel exhausted. My brain is kind of blank, so I'm trying to stay on points and give you guys everything that you deserve. But thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.